What's up guys, my name is Ace, and Ranked Play is finally here with Call of Duty Vanguard, and on top of this, the CDL season has kicked off, and lately I've had a few of the pro CDL players reach out, essentially wanting me to optimize their automaton class setup, because the automaton is the AR that they tend to use, and while they do have most of the attachments locked in, set in stone, they know exactly what they're using, there are a lot of questions surrounding several of the attachments, so today we're going to be optimizing and perfecting the best competitive automaton loadout with all of the current competitive restrictions in mind. And diving right into it, these right here are the attachments that are essentially set in stone. These attachments are what pretty much every professional player agrees on. These ones are locked in, set in stone. These aren't going to be changing. However, there's a lot of questions surrounding the muzzle, underbarrel, ammo type, as well as rear grip attachment. We're not going to be using a magazine attachment with this. And I think the easiest one to get out of the way is ammo type. There is some debate as to whether or not FMJ or lengthened is going to be best for this loadout. And this one's extremely easy to show you guys. Even without lengthened, our bullet velocity is excellent. And the absolute longest line of sight that I can think of that's even moderately practical within the maps that the professionals play on is right here on Gavutu. And this is what it looks like when I'm using FMJ, so I don't have lengthened to boost my bullet velocity. I shot the player five times and I measured each one of these shots. It took exactly 50 milliseconds from the moment my gun went off to the moment the shot registered in every one of these five shots. And then we switched over to lengthened and I did the exact same thing and I got literally the exact same results. When it comes to using lengthened on a setup like this that already has a great bullet velocity, the difference is completely negligible and you're straight up wasting an attachment slot by using lengthened. And this is why FMJ is clearly the superior option that's actually going to be helping you in some situations. And now that we have that out of the way, I wanted to look at the other three attachment slots. And the first thing I wanted to look at is how each of the attachments affect recoil. And these are the attachments where there's some debate. Some pros are using one of these attachments, other pros are using the other ones. So I put all of the contested ones at least together here side by side. Keeping in mind, I am using those other attachments that are set in stone, and then I just swap through each one of these. And when it comes to the muzzle attachments, the F8 stabilizer is clearly the best option when it comes to recoil, which was a little bit surprising, but I noticed very consistently with this, we get a pretty much straight vertical recoil pattern. There's very little deviation off that path. There's no zigzag, there's no curve to it. It literally just kicks straight upward, and then it does bounce a little bit side to side within that but the path itself is straight vertical, which is exactly what we want to be looking for for optimal recoil control. And when we also consider the fact that the F8 stabilizer slightly increases our range, it's by a fairly negligible amount, but there is a slight range increase there. And this only very slightly harms our hip fire spread, which I tried doing the testing with this, and the hip fire reticle while standing still or moving is literally identical compared to not using the F8 stabilizer. That just doesn't seem to be an issue at all when you start using this. And then also it does harm our sprint out time a little bit, but this is designed for AR players for longer range builds, and therefore sprint out time is fairly low when it comes to the considerations of this gun. I would say the F8 is clearly the best option here, and I would go ahead and lock that in and say this is the best muzzle to use with the automaton build. As for the underbarrel grip attachments, it seems the two contested options are the hand stop as well as the M3 ready grip. And you can see the stat breakdown here. The M3 ready grip is better for your handling, so your aim walking movement speed, your sprint to fire time, as well as your aim down sight time, which is all great to see. Whereas the hand stop does give you slightly better recoil control, but this one actually does hurt your hip fire by a somewhat noticeable amount. You can actually tell the difference here. And then I also put their recoil patterns up side by side within the little images there. Keeping in mind this is without the F8 stabilizer, it's just with those initial set in stone attachments from the beginning of the video. And you can clearly see the hand stop has a better recoil pattern. There's less side to side bounce or deviation off of the recoil pattern. So the hand stop definitely has the advantage here when it comes to recoil, but we haven't combined this yet with our F8 stabilizer as well as the rear grip, which we're going to be looking at. But we will look at those combinations toward the end of the video and do another comparison with hand stop and ready grip. But so far, I'm actually liking the ready grip more here because those improvements to our handling and mobility, those are going to be noticeable improvements. Whereas with the recoil control, we can make up for that slightly worse recoil with the other attachments like that F8 stabilizer and our rear grip. 
So sticking with the M3 Ready Grip here, as well as the F8 Stabilizer and every other set in stone attachment, now let's look at the more contested rear grip attachments. The top three are polymer, fabric, and stippled, but I also wanted to throw in granular and grooved because these have some other benefits and I just wanted to see what they look like in the recoil pattern area. And with this, I also put the total aim down sight time, sprint to fire time, as well as our aim walking movement speed, just so you can see the full comparison between these. And out of all of these, to me, the best looking recoil pattern is the stippled grip. And the reason for that is we once again have a nice straight vertical recoil pattern, no zigzags, none of that nonsense. And even though it has a bit more magnitude than something like polymer, that vertical recoil isn't the issue with the automaton. It's mainly just making sure that it doesn't bounce off target side to side or follow a path that goes horizontal. Now this doesn't paint the whole picture though. I was actually thinking polymer might be the better option. And the primary reason behind that is polymer gives us flinch resistance. And flinch resistance is typically an extremely important stat in Call of Duty, so it seemed like polymer might be the better choice, but I wanted to do a direct comparison when it comes to how much flinch we experience with or without polymer. And first up, this is what it looks like without polymer. Keeping in mind, I have player health boosted here as well, just so you can see that flinch occur over a longer period of time. This is an exaggeration compared to what you'd see with just 100 health. I've got 300 health here. But you can see there, there's fairly minimal flinch, even without polymer, and it just kicks straight upward. There's no horizontal flinch at all. It's just purely vertical flinch, and it's not that bad. Now let's have a look at what happens when we have polymer equipped. And honestly, there is essentially zero difference here when it comes to the actual magnitude of our flinch. And I watched this over and over again. I watched these comparisons side by side many times. And the only thing I can tell is the polymer seems to reduce a little bit of the visual flinch. There's a little bit of a screen shake that doesn't actually affect your point of aim at all. And that is very slightly more exaggerated when I'm not using polymer but not to the point where I would say that it matters or that it will actually make a difference in gunfights, especially at 100 health. So therefore, the flinch resistance you gain from polymer is negligible. And as a result, when it comes to that rear grip attachment, I actually lean a bit more in the direction of stippled. In my opinion, this is just the best all around rear grip attachment to be using for the ideal automaton build. And with that, we can finally circle back to the foregrip attachments. Now that we have the other one sort of set up, I wanted to do another comparison with handstop versus the M3 ready grip. And this is the most basic way that I can show this off for you guys. The middle attachments there, these are all in common between both of the recoil patterns on the left and the right. And then you can see with the handstop, we do have a lower vertical magnitude of recoil, which isn't as much of an issue, but we also have tighter initial recoil. You can see those first five or six bullets are a little tighter with the handstop compared to the ready grip, but the ready grip has more of that straight vertical recoil pattern. There's no curve toward the end of the recoil pattern, and it's still very tight and controllable for that initial recoil as well. And you'll also notice, as we already knew, the M3 ready grip gives us better sprint out time, better aim down sight time, and a better aim walking movement speed. And as a result, as an all around sort of a build, I would go with the M3 ready grip here, and that would be the end of it. Having said that though, if you're looking for the absolute most accurate possible setup, you could go with the hand stop here, just knowing that you're going to have a slower aim down sight and sprint to fire time and a slower aim walking movement speed. In either case, here you go. This is the setup that I would recommend. In my opinion, this is the perfectly optimized competitive automaton build and the build I'd recommend for any competitive assault rifle player. Now, of course, I want to hear from you guys in the comment section below. What did you think about these results? Do you disagree with any of them? Do you feel like you want to swap off any of these attachments? Or do you think it is perfectly optimized? And also, I'm just curious, what are your initial thoughts of ranked play so far in Call of Duty Vanguard? Just let me know all of the thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.